It's the fastest way to the bottom. We, we live in a world now as well where uh, online reviews are, are big and they can kill a business. So my favorite line and something I teach everybody to do now is just, so what would you like to do next? The market's huge. So you think 1,600 businesses get registered in the UK a day alone. another episode of your favorite podcast which is the ultimate marketing podcast <laughs> with um with the trio what that is that is me, one thing that's kind of changed for you, um, like you implemented yeah. in that sales process <laughs> right. that you like. yourself well, like and me vish baba the roof of what we were doing so the three before. of us uh, what was your we McDonald's run the moment, ultimate marketing podcast uh, bringing you yeah, all the so latest in marketing a trends bit, techniques um, and tips as well as unbelievable guest experts to make sure that what you are doing in your business today is actually the right stuff rather than just any stuff when it comes to marketing so all digital so marketing really um, strategies we share with you uh, but we also get the experts point, because, because they know best so we want you to make sure that when process. you listen to our podcast you take away at um, least one really good action point that you can so implement in your business today. So, if you, you know, um, like to want to listen to us agencies. on an ongoing you know, basis, it's and go and give us a follow on all major podcasts. Why do you we're on think Apple, Spotify, that, Stitcher? Um, we're you know, also on YouTube. So many people uh, wanting to marketing um, podcast. So give us a search. You know, start and you will find us. You can subscribe and comment. And also ring the bell so you know when the next podcast is available a day. Alone. So today, and the reason that's we have so a very, very special guest. Of, like, uh, in fact, when I first today. met this individual, <laughs> so, like, I wasn't quite sure about him. And early 20s, uh, they but don't over wanna, a few like, the whole, so you get a lot more entrepreneurial um, and come some uh, ongoing on events media, that we uh, ran together, uh, he became not, one of my of very, very good friends. Media, but so let me tell you a about knowing you, it could be one vodka. Let's be honest, it was actually quite a few. So let me tell you a little bit about him. So this individual. He is a seasoned sales professional um, with over 15 years of experience. I mean, he doesn't look that old, to be fair. 15 years of experience across various industries. And that includes, um, you know, call centers, telecoms, high ticket courses. He is currently the COO of a successful seven figure marketing agency, uh, Immortal Media, uh, previously known as Einstein Marketer. And uh, he plays a pivotal role now in helping drive the agency's growth and mentoring others in starting and scaling their own marketing businesses, aka agencies. Um, so uh, his journey really reflects a deep understanding of sales dynamics and a commitment to sharing his expertise. He has agreed to join us. Um, I mean, what this guy doesn't know about sales isn't worth knowing. But I think what's important around here is he is really honed in. If you are a marketing agency listening to this, or yeah. have been thinking about launching your own marketing agency, then um, Adam has r real clear insights and raw insights on what makes an, a marketing attract the best um, customers. So uh, without further ado, it's Adam Davis. Oh, yeah, he's an Oxford fan too. God, dear, you never, never said such nice words about me. The only time you've been this nice is when you made everyone sing happy birthday to me at EMC. I did. <laughs> and, I, I, and I was only nice to you because I knew how much you hated that. Yeah, that was painful. That was painful. So uh, let's start off by, I know I've done that whole kind of intro, um, you know, in terms of your bio, but um, uh, Adam, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about you and also... Why you and sales? Yeah, so when I first got into sales, my intention, I've, I kind of had an idea because my people skills started to get a little bit better as I started getting into my sort of middle teens. So I kind of thought I might go into sales. That seems like a good idea. The company I was working for at the time, they told me there's no way on earth that I would make a salesman. That was what <laughs> they said to me. So in the end, I quit and I went to a commission-only call centre um and for the first month or two i was thinking they're right there's no way i'm gonna make this it was really hard but then 
So what I then learned quite quickly was, particularly at the start of your sales journey, work rate is really hard. So I worked my way up pretty quickly because I just worked harder than anyone else at that point. Not particularly smart, just hard. I just made double the dials. Then I started realizing what the good salespeople did well, started to incorporate that, which meant I could then start to work a little bit smarter um, uh, moving forward. Um, and then moved into um, telecoms. If anybody's worked in telecoms, it's a, a very, very competitive market. I was working in London, going around, hated it, absolutely hated it, going around London in a suit, just didn't like that. So then um, I was just thinking there must be a better solution on the telephone, on Zoom, and stuff like that, although Zoom wasn't really very big back then. Uh, mm -hmm. Moved into uh, actually phone sales and high ticket phone sales particularly, and it just completely changed the game for me. Uh, moved into a head of sales role there um, with quite a well-known public speaker trainer. Um, so Andy Harrington, if anyone knows him, and then onto my own business, my own agency, actually helping other businesses, like sort of Greg Secker's team, Rob Moore's team, um, train their guys, um, and now COO of Immortal Media. Yeah, Boom. amazing, amazing, amazing. And I uh, like. Marketing and sales, often people describe them as two sides of the same coin. Um, but, but what's your take on the importance of sales at, within the marketing mix? Um, I think marketers and salespeople need each other just as much as the other. So marketers need salespeople. I know you've got like, you can make sales on a page and stuff like that, but conversions are going to go through the roof if you've got somebody following up with people. Um, so marketers need sales just as much as salespeople need marketers because nobody wants to be just ringing out of a phone book. You want to have qualified leads coming through to you. So I think, and a lot of the best marketers I know, I've got a sales background as well. Um, it just seems like a natural next step. Um, you've been into sales before and you think, well, look, I could, I could probably do that in a market for other businesses um so there's a really deep connection there yeah 100 percent. it's really it is really symbiotic right and then if you boil it down to the, the bare basics if you don't have people marketing for you you've got no leads to sell to right yeah well you can i mean like i said you can ring out a phone book and i've done that when i first got into sales and it's not fun no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're not even allowed to anymore gdpr you're not allowed to actually do that but from a business you can ring from business directory but again yeah. it, it can it takes a lot of time and a lot of skill to be able to do that as well so the better yeah. the leads you get the more charge you've got to convert in and you can go on to the next one yeah so over you yeah absolutely bro so over your years of having worked within different industries what's the one stand out um what's the one stand out challenge you see businesses face when it comes to marrying up both marketing and sales? Yeah, so the biggest challenge I see, and this is why a lot of people give up on their marketing efforts, particularly paid ads um, specifically, is calling cold leads is different to warm leads. A lot oh. of businesses are so used to speaking to people that have been referred to them and they're, they're, let's be honest, they're the best type of leads that any salesperson's yeah, gonna get. Of course they are. They, they already know, they're, most of the time they're sold or they 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 know where their pains are and the emotional needs of your product before they've even jumped on a call. And all you've got to do is just say the right things and they're going to get over the line pretty quickly. When you're speaking yeah. to a cold lead, you've got to do all of that yourself. And they don't differentiate between the two. They don't spend that little bit more time warming up. If it takes another call, they don't do that. And it's all of a sudden, well, that lead isn't very hot. So that lead source is, is dead. I'm not going to do that anymore. But in reality, they just didn't sort of go out of their way to... to get the skills and in order to actually try and convert a cold lead but that's where the money is for businesses really you can't you can't rely on on referrals to a full extent really if you can then work out and, and understand how to convert a cold lead you can you know, create a more consistent flow of revenue for your business and and that's a problem isn't it with a lot of businesses today because they want that instant gratification so you know they're expecting that the minute they call the minute they pick up a call um pick up the phone they should be able to it's almost like that pressure that they put on themselves that they should be able to convert in the first call i remember during the pandemic one of the things that you had said to me when you were sort of giving me tips and and helping me in the business was like you know d don't try and sell to them in that first call like mm -hmm. you know booking you know that the aim is to book in that second follow-up call um and that's where like you know especially with a cold lead because you've got to build that trust right yeah for sure 
Yeah, that extra um, contact point builds a lot of trust in there as well. But what a lot of people tend to do is just try and sell from the off. So yeah. they'll speak to someone. And again, you can do that a little bit more with a referral because, again, the, the emotional part and all of that kind of stuff's already been done probably by the person referring to you um, or they've already expressed their pains and concerns to them. So it's a lot easier and you can just go into a little bit salesperson mode. But most people, they pick up the phone, they hear what they want to hear, so there's a need for their product or service and then it's just verbal diarrhea. Like, this is what we can do. This is how our product works. Blah, 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 blah. So do you want to spend 10 grand? Like, well, no, not really. Yeah. I always try, and this is something I try to... Well, this is something I try to explain to you, D. You're not, you're not selling your product. Whatever product it is you're selling, whether it's a LinkedIn strategy, whatever it may be, you're not selling that. You're selling change. If you don't understand what it is they're looking to change, you can't sell it. 100%. Yeah, it's about identifying what they need, isn't it? Really, it's like what is it? What's the problems that they got, and what do they need? Yeah, of well, course. Yeah, you've got to identify that first before you try and sell anything. And a lot of market agencies the same. They think, well, look, I can generate an extra fifty k of revenue to your business every single month. I think that'll be enough for some people. It is, but if you actually get to the crux of it and you speak to a business and you think that, like, well. They're, I don't know, let's just say, for example, that the leads that they're getting aren't converting. They're spending too much money on their ads, which means they're doing loads of like cold outreach. They're working 12 hour days. They're missing kids' birthdays, Christmases, and all that kind of stuff because they're grafting. If, you, if you're selling a change to that situation, you can get your, your evenings back. You get that time back with the kids. You increase your revenue. You can go on your holidays, all that kind of thing. That's a way more valuable. Um, offering that you can fix those things and just here's some marketing services people are way mm. more likely to actually purchase that yeah 100%. That, that's the problem as well right people want to go in for you want to go in for that quick win right like hey, here's my shit you're gonna buy it. here's my shit you're gonna buy it. here's my shit you're gonna buy it whereas if you do take a more uh like projected approach and like because I, I full disclosure i sat through your sales training i've gone through the whole the whole you know start to finish of it and it's great because um, and my background, being a sales trainer, working within businesses, um, training their sales teams up, like it was a it was a totally different look and um, angle at which you came at and w- what you come at it with. So like it really opened my eyes up to because I was like, actually, yeah, like you're taking your time with these guys. It's not just about the um, the the mindset of a salesperson and like questioning and stuff. Like it's actually selling, understanding the problem, selling the, the problem back to the customer. And then giving them a solution for it. So you're never selling the solution. You're just selling the problem back to them and making it really hurt and make it like, you know, so that it is actually stopping them from achieving what they want to achieve in life. And then going, well, we can solve that by using this. Um, and then it kind of appears. And mm-hmm. it's like, it's great when you do it like that because then, like you said, you don't need to sell the problem, right? Um, so you don't need to sell the solution. It's, it sells itself. Well, that, yeah. that's the best type of sales process. People yeah. love to, to buy things, but they don't like to be sold to. So what better way of positioning your your pitch, if you like, or f- your framework of your call to position it so they actually sell themselves, right? That's yeah. Then you're just a professional question asker at that point. Yeah. You're not like a, a high-pressure salesperson. Yeah, because yeah, they're selling it to themselves, aren't they, ultimately, just by listening to their own dialogue and, the, and their own answers. Yeah. So. So in, in your, you know, many, many years, many, many years, even though you look so young, Adam, in your ma- face. years of experience in, yeah, in the sales environment, what, what have been the key changes like from, you know, when you started out in sales to now? What's be, what are some of the you know, things that people should be looking out for now rather than using some old strategies? People used to be able to tell people to do stuff. Um, well i'll say rightly or wrongly but it's wrongly so people used to almost bully people into buying stuff mm. um particularly in like um early 2000s and you've seen the films you like to your boiler rooms wolf wall streets and all that kind of things you, you should be able to get away with that like rightly now there's legislations in place and also people are just so like fed up of, that's why a lot of people don't like cold calls still because they assume that that's what it's going to be like even though it, it's not now um a good cold call that doesn't sound anything like that so you you can't really tell people to do stuff now so it's all about helping them understand their need for change and then putting something in place that actually fixes that but also 
um, sort of showcasing and positioning it in a way that it's actually going to tick all of the boxes. So don't worry. Like you can talk about all the other stuff in your product, but focus on the stuff that's actually going to help them. Mm. Uh, like if you go to Apple, for example, you're not going to like, and they, they they're very good at it as well. They're really really good. So you walk into the Apple shop. One of the first questions they ask for is like, what what make what's making you look at the new iPhone? And you, you're going to tell them what's important to you. Our camera. And like, oh, what, what sort of things do you take pictures of? Oh, I've got a little girl. I take lots and lots of pictures of my little girl. I want a really high-quality camera. They're now not going to then talk to you about how the phone's made because that's just going to mm. prompt more questions um, and potentially talk you out of the cell. They're going to get a phone. They're going to show you the camera, the quality of the camera, and then you're going to walk out with it, right? And and that's what we need to do on a, on a, a lot more complicated scale because we don't have the ability to actually – most of us are selling a service, a concept, not an actual physical product. But it's still so identifying need. their need, isn't it? Like that, they're very much identifying what does that customer need before they try and sell anything. They go like, "Why have you come into the store?" And then that gives them information that they can build on. Definitely, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're, they're really good at it, Apple. They are like they're, and and this is something that I love doing as well. It's just seeing every every sort of walks of life, just any different experience throughout the day, looking at the way things are sold. Like the one of my favourite ever uh, things that's ever been done in the sales environment is McDonald's. Do you want to go large for fifty p? How yeah. much revenue that added to their business? It was a yeah. no brainer. It was just a quick question at the end. I think it was something like twenty percent of people took that offer, and it's just like for the amount of money it actually costs them to to give you a few extra chips. It's mm. just all profit to their business. I love it. And the other one as well is you go to a nice restaurant and they just come over and just say uh, still of sparkling. And then that that's added to your bill at the end. Yeah, it's great. They don't they don't ask you, do you want some water for the table? They just assume, and it's awesome. It's like yes, yeah, still or sparkling, and you wanted it, otherwise you would you'd say no, otherwise. Yeah. yeah, and it almost like omits the tap water choice, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, not obviously on purpose, but like not so obviously. But it's just like now you're just kind of I, I choose it from one of those two choices, isn't it? So it the choice of having free water on your table so, yeah so okay having said that like th those are two great examples right so having sold like a variety of different things in your in your in your career bro um uh especially with like the higher ticket stuff mid to higher ticket stuff right what is that one thing that kind of changed for you like that you implemented in that sales process that you're like wow like it's just blown the roof off what we were doing before what was your mcdonald's moment essentially or your apple moment yeah so i always used to a little bit um like the the still or sparkling i used to always always do what's called as an either or close i used to yeah. love it so like which are but two offers there what would you like to do this or this one now and this is something i teach a lot it's a very invitational close so becoming really sharp on your objections because you're almost inviting objections at that point, which is fine. The objections are a vital part of a decision process. They're just yeah. questions. Um, and it's a really invitational close. So my favorite line and something I teach everybody to do now is just, so what would you like to do next? Mm. And it gives them, so they're, they're <laughs> buying something as opposed to them being sold, right? You've given them the yeah. opportunity to buy something as opposed to just saying, like, which one can I sell you essentially? Yeah. It's handing the control, isn't it? Almost. That's what I was just going to say. That's it's just yeah. it's nuts, isn't it? From a mindset perspective and a NLP perspective, people like to, they like yeah. to think that they've made the decision, don't they? Yeah. That's the whole mm. thing, the whole mindset thing around. Yeah. I've made this decision, like like Adam said, like you know, I've been sold to. This isn't forced upon me, yeah. but actually, from the questions I've answered, I definitely know I need this. And now he's asked me the question, actually, yeah. which you know, it's a no brainer almost. Oh, and usually, no. what happens is when you ask that question, the person will say, "Okay, can you tell me what your packages are, or how can how can I work with you?" So yeah. they're then asking you for the information rather than you just spilling it out. Wow! Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm gonna try that with the missus. Give the control over to her. <laughs> right? Yeah. What do you want to do next? Yeah. What uh, do you want to do next, babe? See you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sorry, D, you were going to say something, mate. No, I was just. Oh my god. Let's not even go there. I was, gonna, I was just going to think, mm, what would Kieran do? But anyway, yeah. that's uh, that's where she's on the half. Um, so when it comes to, uh, obviously, right now, the world of, like, like you said, marketing agencies, you know, it's a growing, growing market. Why do you think that, um, you know, there are so many people wanting to um, 
you know, start their own marketing agencies? Why why are there why is there such a rise of this? Mm, the market's huge. So you think sixteen hundred businesses get registered in the UK a day alone. And the reason that's so large is you think of like the youth today. <laughs> so like people in their late teens and early twenties, they don't wanna like on the whole, so you're getting a lot more entrepreneurial people come through. They're seeing on social media people, whether it's fake or not, as I've seen a lot of that sort of nonsense on social media, but they're seeing people living life in a different way and they want a part of that. They don't want to buy into the, I'm just going to go and get a nine to five job, find a partner, have kids and all that kind of stuff. They want more for themselves, which means there's a lot more businesses being sort of set up, which every business to like uh, probably a few exceptions, but most businesses out there need marketing to some capacity. So it's just a growing, growing market. And if you're a decent marketing agency, you're not going to have hundreds hundreds of clients. You don't need to have hundreds of clients. You can have 20 clients paying you three to five grand a month and you could be sitting pretty with that. Yeah. So you're not looking for a a large share of the market. You're just looking for a small piece of the pie, which is why I think it's it's a, a growing industry and you don't really need an awful lot other than a burning desire to do well um to, to get started that's yeah. it. it's hard work like, obviously that like you know as long as you provide a really good service yeah. and you know what you're doing and you can you know continue to provide a really good service then those clients will stay with you month after month hmm. yeah for sure yeah well, i think yeah. that's also key d isn't it you sell once but you also want to retain those people yeah. Um, because it's they always say it's so much easier to sell to an existing customer than it is to go out and get a new one. Yeah. So effectively, that sales job you do in the first instance, you've then got to follow that through with good delivery to those clients, so they do want to stay with you. So there's no there's no point in doing a great sales job and then providing poor service. So yeah. you've got to be good at sales and good at delivery and good at marketing. So I think that for me, those are the three key things that business owners need to focus on. Is like, how do I, what do I need to do to market my business? How do I sell? And then how do I deliver to my clients? You've almost got to have all those three things aligned to be successful, I yeah. think. 100%. So if someone's like thinking about, um, start. I mean, let's just say starting up an agency or whatever it is, but they're thinking about getting on the phones and um, speaking to their customers after they've done the, the warm-up sequences, the, the cold outreach, et cetera, et cetera. Like what's the, what's the right mindset they need to be in to approach that with a view of increasing the chances that they're going to be able to sell and close effectively? Not on the first call, but just eventually over that whole process. Uh, what, what kind of mindset do they need to be in, bro? Um, I, I think you need to clear your mind of any doubts. Um, and also the, the key thing as well is being really present in, in that conversation. Like there's going to be tons of different distractions. And if you run a business, for example, you could be struggling financially when you're speaking to a client. That's in the back of your mind. You're going to come across really desperate. So it doesn't matter what industry, maybe you're starting an agency or whatever. You, yeah, that needs to be clear that the, the client's needs are, are are met. And that's the most important thing on the call. Yeah. You, you hear a lot of people saying, oh, I'll get so ice to Eskimos. Then if, if you do that, you're probably a scumbag because you just sold something to someone that don't need it, right? Um, I'd rather sell them a coat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what a great analogy. I've never, ever, like, Wait. I always said those analogies are really good, but I actually really like this new take on it. Yeah. In terms of, like, sorry, Vish, what was your view, Adam, on, like, you know, salespeople who literally do try and sell yeah. people things that they don't really need or want? Or it's not what their product is isn't the right thing for them, but people are still trying to push it on them. And then you end up people buying stuff and then they end up with like buyer's remorse. So like, what's your take on that? It's the fastest way to the bottom. We we live in a world now as well where like like, uh, online reviews are are big and they can kill a business. If you get enough bad reviews on Trustpilot or on your Google Google page or whatever, it's going to absolutely kill your business. And if if you're offering a service and you're selling something to someone that don't need it or, or can't use it, they're not going to give you a glowing review, are they? Um, and it, it goes the other way as well, right? So the better you can get reviews and you can do a good job for your your client, you said about deliverability is really important. When you're delivering a good job, if you ask for a review, you're going to get a higher rating online on Trustpilot, whatever. Um, and yeah. then again, that's going to make your job as a salesperson much easier because you've got social proof. Mm. Um, but again, it is, if, if you're trying to sell something to somebody that don't want it or need it and it's it's not going to help them anyway that's just not ethical really yeah um 
I know obviously you can't, some will slip through the net. It's inevitable, but if you're if you're then trying to push things on, particularly on the phone and a hard sell, then it's just, yeah, like I said, it's the quickest way to the bottom. Mm. So that, that is so true. That is so true. What were you going to say, Vish, before I... Yeah, I was, no, that's why I was waiting for Vish. Before no. I did. Oh, you forgotten was... now. No, but... No, yeah, no, no. Your, uh, your quote. I'm actually going to get that printed for you, bro. <laughs> we should up <laughs> in the office. I'm going to get you a T-shirt made with it. You're going to get you it tattooed. Sell... Yeah, you should get it tattooed, bro, 100%. <laughs> you want to sell ice to the Eskimos, I'd rather sell them a coat. Coat. Boom. <laughs> exactly. exactly. There's like dollar signs around it. That's actually a really good analogy because, it, it, you know, you're, you're, so, you're, you're so right in doing that. And I... I, similar background. I've worked in call centers. I was, you know, sales agent, customer service agent back in the day. Are you just trying to be like Adam, bitch? Love ads, <laughs> mate. Ads is my is my is my bro, mate. I'm telling you. <laughs> we've got um, many many an EMC where we've, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. Anyway, um, that's that's not what the podcast is about. It's another story. <laughs> yeah, it's it's another story. Yeah. What happens? What happens on EMC stays on EMC, right? Yeah. Um, um, but, people who don't know what EMC is, just just say what yeah, EMC. Our listeners won't know what we mean by EMC. Yeah, the, yeah, entrepreneur. the entrepreneurs marketing conference. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's an event that Immortal Media hosts uh, every year. Um, it was in Brighton last year, um, London the year before, um, and we get some of the biggest minds from from around marketing come and, and share their wisdom from stage. So we've had Stephen Bartlett. Um, yeah. Um, who did we have last year? We had Ryan Dice coming from the States, uh, Ezra Firestone as well, which is incredible. So we've had some really big names in the industry come over and, and speak on stage. Yeah. And it's, um, what's great about it is a no-pitch event as well. So exactly, yeah. Uh, if you are in marketing, yeah. it's an event you have to attend uh, without. Yeah. In fact, even I've spoken on that stage. She has, yeah. I have. I have. Um, Adam, in terms of, like, you know, a lot of businesses, again, you know, one of the things that they think they're doing is selling, but mm. really all they're doing is marketing because they're afraid to pick up that phone and actually make and have a conversation. They're fearful. They're fearful of rejection. All, all of those signals that people tend to fear when it comes to sales. But they, they do so much on that whole marketing piece. They get out there. They're doing videos. They're doing They're doing everything other than selling. Um, so for those individuals, like in your opinion, what should be the ratio split between marketing and sales? Um, it, it's gonna, that's going to vary by um, what you're offering and stuff like that, how much your price is and, and, and things like that. Because some things, you're not going to pick up the phone and, and sell if you're sending like a £2 product, really. You're just going to get as much traffic through to your site as, as possible and, and try and get as many sales as you can. But if you're sending something of value, um, and, and even if you've got data on your list as well, if you've got the ability to call them, you just got to do it. Uh, particularly for high ticket sales, the chance of you selling that on a page is so slim. A, mm -hmm. a lot of people think, well, I'll just record a webinar and I'll try and make as many sales as possible. I guarantee if you then followed up with everybody that went on that webinar and actually gave them a call, you'd at least double your sales. So picking up the phone is really important, particularly for a new business. Not everybody's got a ton of cash to spend on, on ads. And if you don't know what you're doing, the, the most effective way is probably just to be pick up the phone and learn as you go. It's not actually costing you anything other than that, that time to actually ring somebody at that point. Yeah. It's an and interesting point because I tend to get, because we, me and Vish do like funnels, we tend to help people bring in the leads. So they bring in the leads and then they don't want to do the piece around phoning people up and having the conversation. Yeah. So they go, oh, it didn't work. It didn't work. I'm like, well, hang on a minute. We've just generated 70 leads for you. Now you've got to do your job of phoning those people up and having a conversation yeah. with them. And so many yeah. people resist it. And it's so, so I'm, frustrating. I'm, it's so sad because they're just leaving so much money on the table by not Thanks, just yeah. picking up the phone and having a chat with those people. But, then, but you but, can't. But, Sorry. Now go on, Mish, go on. No, you, you can't make them do that, can you, Ads? Like, we can't. Like, you can advise them. Many a time. Um, well, you can threaten to say that you're not going to have them as a client anymore and they're not going to have any leads. So, again, but that sort of stuff got, has got to be um, sort of set out. Those expectations need to be set yeah. out at the start before you, you've sold them the funnel, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, I mean, we do funnels and stuff here. and We've had that in the past and we've kind of made those mistakes in the past and just assumed that they're going to call them mm. and that they know what they're doing, which is the main, this is the main reason that I'm now part of Immortal Media, by the way. So I, I ran my own sales training agency. So my clients were closing, but they didn't really have an abundance of leads. So I was referring my guys to, to Matt's team, Immortal Media, 
max guys were getting a load of leads come through the door, but they weren't converting them. So they were getting blamed for the leads because mm-hmm. a salesperson is always going to blame the leads if they're not closing. So then we've merged everything together. So now we offer that sales support for our clients. Um, so again, it's something we can work with them on an ongoing basis if they're not closing. But it's so frustrating. And it still happens, even if you're out managing expectations, whether it's from a funnel, whether it's from a lead form, whatever it may be, you're driving inquiries, you're looking at the quality of the leads coming through. And they're saying, well, I'm just not getting through to them. Or, or they didn't show or whatever. But have you tried to call them again? Like, did mm. you try to double call them? Have you tried them again the next day? Like these people are worth X amount of money to your business. Yeah. You've just paid the best part of 30, 40 quid to generate the lead. Surely you should be like, like respecting that and trying to call them as much as possible. Um, but yeah, there's so much sound resistance, unfortunately, when it comes to that kind of stuff. They, they just kind of want it on a plate. Talking of that when we're of sales, when you, you know, like that persistency is key. Like you might not get it on the first go, the second go. On average, how many touch points should um, you know? Should you be looking at um, to be able to you know really start to warm up your clients on a sales call? Yeah, so it, again, it's it quite varied depending on price points, what you're offering, and stuff like that. But for an example, in a marketing agency, I looked at this recently. So we close around ten percent on a first call out of everybody that comes through to our business, and that includes referrals and warm leads. Like What I mean by close is invoices sent and they're paid and signed a contract and stuff. So it's very, very rare on the first call that somebody's actually closed, and that doesn't make the salesperson a bad salesperson. You've got to think they've just heard of you. They've just heard an offering. They've got to see if it fits right for the business. There's loads of other stuff that goes into place, but one thing that our team hopefully do well, uh, because I manage it and I make sure that they're doing it, is handle all of the objections before they let them go. It's not just an easy escape. Like, okay, well, look, this is what we do, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to let you go away and think about it. They, they're going to then ha- handle any objection that might come their way. So when mm. they are going away and think about it, it's a genuine concern. They might have a business partner that wasn't available. But even then, we've pre-handled those objections. Why do you think they might say no? Right, so hypothetically, let's just say, for example, they say no. Why do you think that would be? Yeah. And they could say, and then if that person says to you, oh, your price is a little bit higher, they've not spoken to that person. So that concern's coming from within them. So now we know that's an objection with them, which we can handle it, right? So we can yeah. handle all of those before they go away. Um, mm-hmm. And if you do that properly, then yeah, a two call close will work really, really well. But okay, every, not everybody's ready to buy when you're ready to sell. So you need to be like you need to add pressure um but that pressure doesn't come from you trying to make a sale that comes yeah. from you trying to avoid them making more mistakes and furthering their problem then yeah. you can put as much pressure on them as you want at that point because if they're not if they wait a month and it, all it's going to do is create more debt create more problem whatever that pain is that they've told you about then why would they wait that it doesn't make any sense yeah, yeah. And that's where the that's where the marketing can really help, can't it? Because, like you said, if they're not specifically ready to to buy at that point, then ensuring that you've got, you know, whether it's email marketing, whether it's you know that you're constantly visible, and that's how marketing can fit into sales really well. Because then, and Matt talks about this, doesn't he? he talks about the trust timer, about how you build that trust so that when they're ready, to, they don't forget you that you are still. At the point that they go, right, now we're ready, mm. they, they know that, all right, I've already had a chat with Adam or I've already had a chat with Sarah, let me go back to her. Um, and, and so, therefore, next time you make an offer, offer or they'll call you either way, it's a much, it's 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 a cert sale. Yeah. Yeah. And part of the marketing's job is to imprint your brand in their mind, right? So, like, Andy always used to say this, every time you think of running trainer or running shoe, you think of Nike. Because they, they're forever, their marketing's always there. They're always putting their brand in front of your face. If you run a plumbing company, they're like for, someone might not have a leak when they see your ad. But in a month's time, when the, there's water coming through the ceiling, you want to be the first one they call, right? Yeah. And the, another thing that you was mentioning earlier about funnels, another thing that's so frustrating what a lot of companies tend to do is you generate them a ton of leads. Let's say 10% of them book a call if it, that's the objective, but you still got nine people in the database there's never a single ever a touch point that happens again. They don't send an email. They don't follow up in any way, shape, or form. And then they're just sitting there right away. And it's just completely pointless generating that lead. If you yeah. can get them in a mailing list, for example, and this is 
for a salesperson, this is what you want. You want them to be warmed up. You want them to be engaged in your services because then if you do call them again in a month's time, they know who you are. They trust you that little bit more um, and, and they might be in that situation in a better position to buy. But again, so many people do that. You just never, yeah. never speak to them again. That, that was one of the things I was going to say to you because like, you know, the, the, like in your opinion, when does marketing end and sales take over? Because like you said, they're, they're, you know, people will jump on, they'll surrender details, they'll book in a call, but there'll also be people that will surrender details and never book in a call. And then they just get, you get left in the pot essentially, right? So where does marketing end and where does sales start in your opinion, bro? Well, it's like an intertwining cycle. Because again, if, if yeah. you've generated a lead and you've tried to call them, they've not answered and you try three times a day for the next week and they don't answer, you want marketing to kind of take back over to re-engage them, right? They obviously were avoiding you for some reason. They didn't trust you to some capacity. Yeah. They might get a couple of emails um, and then their pain will get worse. Whatever that thing is that's made them opt in in the first place gets worse. Um, and then at that point, they think, right, okay, I, I need to have a call with them now. And they might get re-engaged. And then as a sales person, you take back over again. But yeah. I like to see it as competition between sales and marketing. Um, as I always used to, always was in competition with the marketing because a marketer's job is to try and make as many sales as possible, right? Obviously, they want to generate leads, but if they can sell something online and not pay commission to a salesperson as a business yeah. owner, you're going to do yeah. that. You're not going to pay that. You're not going to want to pay the salesperson, preferably. So I always used to look at that as competition. I think, well, I'm selling to that person, so I would bring more leads than anyone else because I'm like, oh, I want that commission. That commission mm. come to me. I'd rather that than just go to the business and I don't see a penny of it. Yeah, a hundred percent. So true, man. And, and you know, like, uh, what was the saying? The money's in the list, right? Or well, the fortune's the follow up. That's that's where the money is. Like people do that. They leave, they leave money on the table. Like their money's in their database. But just because why did someone sign up to what they did? Obviously, wanted to see what you had to offer, but they didn't trust you enough at the time to take it further. So yeah, hundred percent, man. I, I firmly believe that. Um, just staying on from that, Bish, actually, because yeah. I was going to say the same thing. It's like, how many businesses do you work with, Adam? where they are able to not even have to get more leads, but actually, you know, the number of leads that are sat in their list or, you know, in, in their contact book, um, that they then, once working with you guys, they're then able to, like, what's been some of the conversion rates of, you know, increasing the number of sales they've been able to convert from not even having to get any further leads? Yeah, so with us in our business, we one of our key criteria is we really look into their their follow up and, and their sales system anyway. Um, so if we if we're speaking to somebody who does nothing within their sales like for follow up or anything like that, we won't take them on as a business because we'll just have those problems we were talking about earlier. Um, but it, like one of the businesses we took on recently was quite similar. They've got a decent sized database anyway. Um, we started doing a little bit of work with them on the sales side to try and um, help with the new cold leads, but then kind of reminded them, you've got a database there. Like, yeah, leads are coming through relatively slowly at the moment. You've got sales team that are making like two or three calls a day. In between that time, they should be calling and re-engaging that list. Because the top of the top of funnel is the most important part for a marketing you know, for, from a marketing perspective, but also a sales person's perspective perspective sales people don't understand that marketers do so mark from a marketing perspective we're always looking at new leads coming into the pipeline and that's the key thing we focus on because we know that filters down into the the bottom of the pipeline which will be inquiries or sales whatever it may be from a salesperson perspective the one thing they don't want to do is the top of funnel stuff cold calling re-engaging people from the list trying to sell to um, previous customers Mm. They're looking to they're looking for low hanging fruit and to be spoon fed, um, but yeah. So again, that's that's one thing that we uh, a message we really hammer home to any new business is that that sales cycle and what happens once we've generated a lead. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I see that happens quite a lot is that people want to build a funnel to bring in leads, and so I build the funnel for them. And we have like the welcome and nurture sequence, so they go through that. And what I say to my clients is you then need to have ongoing communications with those people you've brought yeah. in. So I see people investing a lot of time and money in creating the, the funnels and the welcome sequence, but then they don't spend the time keeping that communication going. So what I'm saying to my clients is there's only a point in, in having a funnel and bringing leads in if you are then going to follow up with them and engage with them further. Because they go cold really quickly, don't they? So, you know, there needs to be ongoing comms, like you were saying, Adam, so that the marketing's still doing its job whilst the sales 
person is trying to get the, the sales coming in. Because otherwise, there's just no point in bringing the leads in if you're not going to then do any sales work on the back of it. And everyone thinks they can sell. That That's a big problem. Yeah, Everybody thinks true. because they've sold in the past, they think they can yeah. sell. But in reality, yeah. they're going into calls with zero framework to the, to the call. Yeah. The, but any, any doesn't matter whether you're a business owner or a top salesman or whatever it may be, or a salesperson in any business, they've all got a framework. They've all got preparation going into that call. They know how the call is going to go. They know how it's structured. They know the first part of the call is going to be finding, well, I call it finding the gap. So they're going to be really understanding where that problem lies and what's happening as a result of that problem. That's how you find the pain. People confuse problems with pain. But no, a problem is something that's happening. A pain is what's happening as a result of it. Pain is mm. what makes people drive change. Then once they've done that, and only once they've done that, they'll then start to showcase their solution. So I call that find the gap. And again, once they've done that, and they don't spend much time on that bit, they'll, they'll, they'll do what they need to do. Then they'll go into a close and then handle objections and stuff like that. But what most people are doing is just picking up the phone because they've got a lead and just mm. seeing where the call goes. No, you need a solid framework that's repeatable and uh, consistent. So having the having the framework obviously is really important, and you said like obviously people are just picking up the phone and calling. Um, so we had in one of the other episodes we had Sam Howard from uh, Two Thirds Different, and he's like, you know, speed to re- yeah, I love Sam, right? He's awesome. Speed to response, like the quicker you can respond to a customer once they've made an inquiry, increases your chances of then getting the sale in. It doesn't mean you get the sale on the first contact, but you know, the quicker you respond, the the problem is more live in there. How 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 do you find that with? with calling as well because obviously sam deals specifically with like you know automations whatsapp inboxing you know messenger bots um how does that work with phone calls as well like i know i know what my take on it is yeah it's really important that you do follow up really quickly because like what marketing does or good marketing does is it puts people into a certain state which is understanding and starting to realize the pain and the problems that they're currently facing and then it becomes a little bit more urgent but what happens is over time they go back into their old state that comfort zone of just ignoring it, putting it to the back of their mind and just pretending that it's not happening. But in reality, it's, it's probably just getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, but people, like, if you give them that time, then they, they'll come out of state. And this is a yeah. big problem with people that run webinars as well, is they don't strike while the iron's hot. They'll run a webinar yeah. on, like, a Thursday or a Friday, and then they've got sales team following up with people on, like, Wednesday or Thursday the next week. They're yeah. so out of state by yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. And it is about getting them in that state, is it? Because... We- human beings are deletion machines so eventually they're just you know life gets in the way that is the true yeah. thing and unless you are in front of them reminding them of the pain that they're in um they're gonna like you said like you said sort of forget about it so um so yeah totally totally get that before we um we want to quick fire round if you were going to give three tips your three top tips for um you know uh, for entrepreneurs marketing agency owners founders business owners when it comes to sales what would they be work right to start off with if you're not even if you are skilled um if you're not making enough sales just work harder speak to more people um it's, it's an obvious one but it, it's really big being aware of, of the change and the problem that the the prospect's facing so many people don't actually understand the pain um I even sometimes now i'm doing a little bit of training now i ask them where was their pain point they're like what is this now that's not a pain that's just a problem they're facing where's the pain that's attached to it and like, yeah i don't know and they've been yeah. selling for years I just, I just don't know so be mm. really aware of their pain um and their need for change and be really present be really really present on the call ignore any distractions and again if you're in a sales team you're yeah. going to have targets that you need to hit that could be quite stressful and stuff like that just delete it out for that one hour or half an hour whatever it is you're on a call well, then worry about it after same as a business owner, if you've got targets you need to hit, you are not got enough revenue in this month or whatever, or whatever it may be, just again, that needs to completely go out the window. Just focus on what this individual or business needs from you um, and then offer that. Don't just uh, don't just offer something for the sake of it because you you sound desperate and like we said earlier, it's, it's the quickest way to the bottom. So those are my three things, I think. I really like that last one about being present because salespeople can often be seen as, you know, uh, money hungry individuals who don't uh, and not very caring. But actually, you know, there are so many people who take that stance, um, but then feel that they, you know, because they don't have the other techniques, they they don't do well. But I think that's a really good thing to remind yourself, isn't it? Be present, be with that person in that yeah. call. 
So that's it's the, hard for me. I, I didn't realise until recently, but I, I've got diagnosed of ADHD. So, so what I do, and this is the main thing for me because I'm just distracted by anything, is my phone's on silent and it's face down. I can't. That that to me is my biggest distraction. If I get a notification, it plays in my mind, and then I can't concentrate. Um, you know how when you're thinking of a question and someone's talking to you, and it, it's almost just like that you're looking at them and their lips are moving, but you can't hear it <laughs> because you're so focused on your question. You can't, you, you literally, you don't know what they're saying. You're thinking, oh no, I, I haven't been listening for the last five minutes. And then, yeah. like you said, it's, it, you, you've lost it. But again, if you've got those distractions and that kind of thing's happening when you're on a call, like you can't, you, you can't tap into their, their need and that emotional need. People buy of emotion justify with logic. And if you can't tap into that emotional lead because you weren't listening or you were sort of just thinking about yourself or something like that, then yeah. Well, thinking about the end result, because that's what a lot of salespeople think, isn't it? They, yeah. They're so attached to the outcome yeah. that they forget everything that's happening in the middle and that, that kind of journey. Yeah, I've got one. I've got one. I'm going to make a sale. Like, no. <laughs> At that moment, you lost them. Yeah. All right. Quick fire round. Um so we'll do a couple of rounds before we wrap this up. Um, I'm definitely going to kick off with this one. Uh, Wenger, I'm dreading this. Wenger or Arteta? Oh, Wenger. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was expecting worse than that. It's the worst yet to come. I don't know. Come on, Wenger or Arteta? I, I, love, I, I do like Arteta, but Wenger, come on. It's like, it's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just double checking. Just double checking. He's my you childhood. Know, you're seeing pretty in the top four, aren't you? So. Yeah. Yeah, but he won the league undefeated, so. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have lost me now. I have no idea what you're talking about when it comes to football. Oh, right. Really? Morning. <laughs> All those Liverpool Over my head. Big <laughs> Arsenal, big Arsenal fan uh, is uh, Adam. So, yeah, just like yeah. to get that. Get All that. I know is that Adam, Adam was saying earlier on that Liverpool, uh, Liverpool supporters are scum, so. And that, bear in mind, that's pretty much all I work with as well. Everyone in here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, oh, none yeah. of them have ever even been to Liverpool, I don't think. Oh, I sorry. They've got um, all the Wilson brothers that are all Liverpool fans in here. Yeah. So Liverpool or Chelsea, I'm the only Arsenal fan. I, I did, to be fair, I did give Matt some Liverpool tickets. So, yeah, at least he got yeah. there. <laughs> uh, Vish, over to you. Oh, Vish or Sarah? Sarah. Let's go, Vish. Okay. No, got, yeah. um, quick bit of advice for people who are scared of picking up the phone. Lucky in a few words. Just do it and worry about it later. Yeah. Um, quick fire round. What's what's your favourite phone greeting when you're ringing up to speak to a customer? Um, a customer or a prospect? As in a prospect. So you have a prospect. Not, yeah. Cold calling. Um, look, this is this is a cold call. Can you give me thirty? Uh, would you like to hang up or can I have thirty seconds? Boom. Yeah. Who are you most inspired by? Um, professionally and personally, but um, yeah. So personally, definitely my mum. Um, so when I was uh, in my early teens, when my dad left and stuff, that woman was working three jobs to, just to give us Sky so I could watch Arsenal. That was so. That to me is that that work rate. I think is where I get it from. Yeah. Um, and then professionally probably is her as well she was a hustler she oh, like, really? yeah like she had three jobs at one point and then all of a sudden we had a bag of dodgy t-shirts delivered from turkey that she was going to take down the market and sell them so yeah probably the same oh yeah. awesome so we're, we're that entrepreneurial spirit in here yeah. as well bro your yeah. mom sounds like a gangster i want to meet you man that is <laughs> yeah. awesome yeah no she's nuts yeah oh best book Perfect. to read on sales for a beginner um, Alex Hormozzi, he's, he's releasing a new one, which is actually sales focused, but a hundred million dollar offers. You, mm. you still got a lot of sales tactics in there. Brilliant book, yeah. Yeah, really good. Mm. This final one, end final it on a question. good one. Um, oh my, I can't. I'm, I'm too close to him. I know. I like. I like. It's like. Oh, what do I ask? Um, Pepsi or Coke? <laughs> oh, Pepsi Max. It's not even yeah. a question. Yeah. Hundred yeah, no, percent. There we go. Yeah. No advertising. Yeah. No, no, no Coke truck this Christmas. I'll tell you that no, now, mate. Well, definitely. Yeah, nice. um, and if people want to get hold of you, um, yeah. you know, Adam, uh, what's the best way? Uh, have you got anything going on at the moment? What's happening? Yeah, I would say check out if, if agency wise, check out our website, immoralmedia.co. 
Um, there's a ton of information on there. Um, if you are interested or potentially thinking about starting an agency and you want some free advice on that, um, then dmaacademy.co, so dmaacademy.co. And then we've got like a, a, a mini series on there, which gives you some indications of what running a business uh, marketing agency looks like. Um, and then our contact details all over those pages. If you really want to follow me on, on social media, I'm boring. I don't post a lot, but it's <laughs> I'm Adam Davies is my Instagram handle. Oh, okay. And yeah. uh, I mean, I have, um, you know, I have uh, take, gone to Mortal Media uh, and they've helped me set up my agency. So, um, yeah, it's definitely worth um, looking into these guys. So uh, thank you once again, Adam, for... Uh, coming along, spending time with us and um, having a good old chin wag. Uh, lovely to see you as always. No worries. Thank you for having me. Enjoyed it. Uh, good, good. I'm glad. Pleasure. And just a reminder to follow us. Uh, you just need to go and search for the Ultimate Marketing Podcast, all major po- uh, podcast platforms, plus YouTube. You will find us everywhere you just need to put the ultimate marketing podcast into the search box um and uh myself the gorgeous sarah and the very sophisticated rish baba will see you uh, in the next episode um but until then make sure you share like comment and also let us know what you know who what if you had a guest if you wanted a guest on our podcast who would it be who would you like us to try and get for you Um, And let us know what action points you're implementing in your business just by watching this. So until next time, we'll see you. Bye.